Welcome back to Obsessive Prepper AZ. Today I wanted to do a quick review on this Okmo 2000 power station. we're always looking for other alternatives to take care of our family's needs especially if there is a power outage the grid goes down you have a hurricane you can't you know have any electricity will this work now I wanted to do this review um, you know we do things like solar lighting solar sun ovens and I always push that I think it's an affordable way that you can build your preps up and have these things for emergency this you know your power goes out do you have lights and then you don't have to worry about storing so much gas propane you know generators are great as long as you have the gas to run them but they're also noisy and so in an shtf situation yes it might be a great thing to have but then you have to worry about other people around you so things that you can have that are quiet that can run the items that you need and not only that this I, I put this thing through the test and if you keep watching my video I go through it completely of what I learned how long I could use certain devices but I see this potentially for people that have RVs that are going camping that need it for certain reasons it comes with a car charger that you can plug in it comes with this power source that you plug into the wall and you know it just is different options that you can use this for now my son went out with my grandson camping and he took this power station with him he was able to plug, uh, blow up his air bed. He was able to run all the little things like a griddle and things like that because we live in Arizona and a lot of times we have where we cannot run any kind of fires or anything like that. So I see this potentially a great thing for somebody that wants to take it for camping to run lights, things like that, especially if you don't want to run a generator that's noisy. Now I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm going to say right up the front that this thing is pricey the G 2000 is approximately fifteen hundred dollars the G 1000 is eight hundred ninety nine dollars so for the pocketbook you know your wallet it can be pricey and I would never tell anybody to run out and go get a power station as a prepper you know I always try to give you alternative ideas like solar sunlights to use in your house I'm not a fan of candles people can use candles but I think in an SHTF situation you can burn down your house and uh, I think solar is the way to go charge it during the daytime bring it in at night solar Sun ovens to cook your food but let's say you don't have it you have small spaces things like that you know you can use this unit the only thing is is it is AC that charges it you need to definitely get some solar panels. Now I got this, um, I don't have my solar panels, I'm gonna have to save up, I'm gonna get two 100 units um, solar panels to charge this, um, but that's the next thing, and if you keep following, I'll have another video coming out with me charging it. Um, I don't want to do a lot of talking in this video, I just want to show you what it can do. Now I'm not a power, um, I'm not smart with watts, uh, electricity. I want to say that there's two gentlemen, I'll leave them down below in the description that get down to the nitty gritty of electricity. We'll talk about the watts, that kind of thing. They also show you what kind of uh, things they can use from power tools to garden tools, to heaters. So I think between all three of us, if you watch all three of the videos, it'll give you a general idea of what you can use and how long you can do it. And that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know thoroughly what I could run this on and how long I could run it. That's what I primarily needed to know for myself. How long I could run a freezer. What could I run with the freezer? And so again, as outages, I'm never going to look at this being a permanent use because if you have solar panels hooked to it, you're going to have to, in the daytime, have it out in the sun and charge so that you can run it at night. But I do believe there is a place for a power station, a power bank for you 
after you've built up your preps. So we're gonna go ahead and get on into it. And then as you're watching it at the very end of the video, I will tell you my other thoughts about the unit. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so real quick, I wanted to get into the power station and just show you a few of the details about this Okma 2000. Now, I have the power bank plugged in. When you get it in, it's about half charged. Now, Okma re recommends that you fully charge your unit before you ever use it. And when you use it, they recommend not to drain the battery. Try not to go below the two bars. There's five bars here. So they recommend not to go below that too. Also, when you're using your Okmo, you want to think about um, things they recommend you read your your booklet. It's not a big booklet. It is easy to read and easy to understand. There's a lot of people I've watched reviews on on this thing that didn't follow all the instructions. And the basic instructions is when you get it in, you plug it in and you charge it completely. The other recommendation is, is when it is charging, not to plug anything in. It'll drain the battery and it'll put more of a strain on your charging battery unit here. So I've seen also in videos where um, a certain people, a gal shows that this is super hot. This gets super hot. I don't know if Okmo learned and changed the battery. I've not seen or had an issue with it. There's a gentleman that put um, a review up that said put it on some ceramic tile, something like that, because it gets hot. I've not had any issues with this charger as of yet. Also, um, somebody that didn't read the review completely, the, uh, the booklet, that they were trying to charge the unit, and then they were trying to charge other things, use other things. They tell you when you're charging not to plug anything in. Um, it's just too much probably strain on the battery. It comes with, again, your DC, your car charger to charge it. So on the AC, it has three plug-ins. When you're using this, you'll want to push this button down, and then it'll, you know, put the energy out. Um, you see an AC output on the uh, screen here. It has the DC in. It has different ports, USB ports for your phones, different devices. And it's basically pretty simple. Now, a few recommendations. Again, let me go over. Is they when you store this thing, they tell you not to store it with the battery drained. Make sure that you charge it at a hundred percent. They also recommend that you keep it plugged in. Now, if it's not something that you want to do to keep it plugged in, they tell you to try to pull it out every month to two months and charge it. Make sure it's charged. It also says to not leave it around any metals because it'll drain that battery. So, you know, there's a few things that you need to pay attention to. It shouldn't be in direct sunlight and it shouldn't be in the heat. Obviously, it shouldn't be in the rain. So uh, when you're using solar panels and you hook up to it, try to keep this in the shade. Now, we're in Arizona. You're going to have to make sure it's in the shade because anything that's out in the sun will overheat. I don't care what it is. So uh, there's a few fine details on it. Um, let's get on into the video. So the first thing I wanted to try was my freezer, my small Thompson freezer. I wanted to see if this Okmo can handle it and how long it could handle. So in this next clip, you can see my son, he's plugging it in. Also, I told you about having to hit this AC output button to get it going. And I just put the stopwatch on my freezer. Couldn't believe how long it charged. So we are three and a half hours in on our Okmo running, six hours. The next clip is almost 10 hours and we still are at five bars. Okay, so it's been 12 hours. I've been running my freezer and finally the bar dropped one. I have four bars left. So it 12 hours and one bar down, still going. It's late at night, it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this thing hooked up. I'm gonna keep my stopwatch running and uh, when I wake up tomorrow, I'll get back to filming and I'll show you where the bars are at. So I am impressed. We are almost 19 hours in. Well, hello everyone. It's been over 24 hours and we've only lost one bar on our unit here. Now this is the 2000 watt unit. 
24 hours and 22 seconds. No, 24 hours and 22 minutes is what we've got on this. So I'm gonna have to say my little freezer's working like a charm. The unit is not hot. The only thing I notice is every once in a while a fan will click on. Um, not crazy amount, probably every hour or so. Uh, but to only lose one bar with my freezer connected, that I think that's amazing. And as preppers, I'm not looking to run my appliances 24 hours a day. What I am looking as running at a four hours on my freezer, letting everything get keep frozen. They can last on your freezer, the product, for about two days before things start really melting and going bad. So I wanna keep things frozen. So every four hours, refrigerator, that gets real hot real quick after about four hours. So I look to be able to interchange my refrigerator and my freezer, and I think this will handle it perfect. Also in Arizona, it gets hot here in the summertime. I wouldn't necessarily anticipate having to use a uh, air conditioning because in an SHTF situation, we're just gonna have to get used to the heat. But can we operate a tower fan, something like this that can circulate the air? Also, if it's nighttime, can we run a little table lamp like this while my refrigerator or freezer is charging? So for the next hour two hours we're going to watch the bars go down on this and see how long we can actually run all three um so we're going to go ahead get these plugged in show you so this is the tower fan i'm going to plug this in here and turn it on and i've got this at a what do we have this on on a low setting i'm not even going to try to do a high because if it's an SHTF situation or a power outage, I would think not to maximize everything. I don't think there will be an issue. So that's on high. Everything's running fine. I'm gonna put it on low. Okay, and then my table lamp back here, just a little office desk lamp. Plug that in. Let me turn that down so there's not a complete glare. And we're gonna go ahead and keep the, the stopwatch on. We're gonna keep an eye on the bars and we're gonna see what all three units use as far as power. And again, I'm not an expert with electricity. I'm going to, at the end of the video, recommend two gentlemen to watch that give complete, thorough reviews on the product. And, and they are more electrical minded than I am. And so it's worth it to watch if you want to know the watts and that kind of thing. But for me, I need to, in my head, to know what I can operate. So I've got a couple other things that I'm going to show you that I'm going to plug in after I recharge this, once this is all done, and we're going to see what we can use. So we just went to two bars on our power pack here. It has been running for 30 hours and 37 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything, plug it in, recharge it to full capacity. So keep watching. Okay, so I just unplugged everything. It is 1121 at night, and I don't sure if you're going to be able to see this on screen or not, but we are at two bars. I plugged the DC adapter in, and uh, we're going to see how long it takes to get a full charge. Now their recommendations, I'm going to get my camera on here for you to see, is to maximize battery life. Be sure to fully recharge your Okmo G2000 before operating or storing. To shorten the recharge time of the Okmo G2000, it is recommended to disconnect all loads while recharging the unit. So we're going to go ahead and figure out how long at two bars this is going to take to recharge. Hey everybody, um, just back to talk about the power station a little bit. Um, we have this thing running with a freezer, a fan, and a light for 30 hours, and it only got down to two bars. Um, we plugged it back in and got it to a full charge, and it took only about eight hours. Um, we just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, it's great using the freezer with this thing. Um, power goes out and anything like that. But my grandmother, she used this oxygen machine right here. Um, for somebody with 
stage four cancer, lung cancer, or any other related health issues where you need oxygen and the power is out, this power bank, this power bank will run this machine no problem. Um, we'll go ahead and plug it in right here. And a lot of people don't think about something like that where if somebody needs oxygen and there's no power, what are you gonna do? So we're not gonna pull out any of our oxygen hoses just because they're all wrapped up and don't wanna waste them. They're all sealed in packages. But I will show you this machine turned on and you can definitely feel the air coming out of here. Another thing to think about is even people with portable oxygen units, um, when they need to leave the house, those need to be recharged. And this, again, will have no problem recharging those items. Even if you don't have electricity to charge this thing, you can connect solar panels to it. And there you go, you have a uh, power bank with limited running power. So if you're gonna use this for long periods of time, I would probably shut it off every once in a while. Uh, I don't know how much I would just constantly run it off the power bank. Also another thing is in the manual it says to keep any sources of heat away from the power bank. So if you're gonna use a <coughs> portable heater with this item, I would probably stretch it out quite a bit away from her. So. And you can also see that the unit's heating up. It's turning red yeah, and it no works. No problem whatsoever. Yep. Well, there you go. I hope the video wasn't too long, but like I had said, I wanted to know exactly what I could use and for how long, because I am always looking as a prepper, what I can, my backups are, what I need. Um, again, I think this Oakmo is great. Um, we've had a lot of success with it in trials, and um, I, I just think if you're looking for another power source that's not a generator and not solar, you wanted it portable, this Oakmo is the way to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified for future videos, ring the bell. Have a blessed day.